I like to say that the bike doesn't care about what gender you were assigned at birth. The bike doesn't judge you. Rachel McKinnon is getting set to compete in one of her first races of the season. A small crowd of spectators has gathered just outside of Atlanta Go! to cheer on some of the local cyclists. Rachel McKinnon winding up now. No one appears too concerned with McKinnon during her time trial, but in the past, she's found herself at the center of a political firestorm. She's transgender, and last year, she won a world championship for her age group, racing against women. McKinnon takes it into world champion, O oh, Canada. The world championship win was a little historic. <laughs> And it's, it's completely surreal that, that I'm that person. Like, I'm just some girl from Victoria, BC, uh, who just wanted to race her bike. Normally, the win would have attracted very little media attention, but not this time. A Canadian transgender athlete is facing a backlash after winning the Cycling World Championship. Rachel McKinnon, who was born male... She says the reaction online was overwhelming. A lot of support, but good goddess, the, the amount of backlash was a new level for me. I estimate it was about 3,000 to one negative and generally very hateful comments to positive ones. McKinnon is a fiercely outspoken transgender activist and academic. <coughs> She's become a central part of the roiling debate around rules, rights, and biology in elite sport. At issue, just how to include trans women in competition. The idea that we need to protect women's or female sport from other women and females is itself inherently discriminatory. No testosterone policy will ever work. They should respect an athlete's legally recognized sex or gender. McKinnon publicly posted her testosterone levels online to show just how low they are, nearly indetectable. She believes trans athletes shouldn't be forced to take hormone therapy at all. That's a stark contrast to the type of guidelines many sporting federations, including the International Olympic Committee, have in place. Before, if a transgender athlete wanted to compete in the Olympics, they had to have sex reassignment surgery, but those rules changed in 2016. They now focus on testosterone levels. There are no restrictions if someone transitions to a man, but if they transition to a woman, they need to take hormone therapy for at least a year in order to be eligible to compete. Lift, 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 lift. Pick up the big toe. One, two, three, four. This isn't just an issue limited to the highest levels of sport like the Olympics. Jump, float, beautiful. But it's permeated throughout different levels of competition. Two, three, four. Linda Blade is a coach and president of Athletics Alberta. She believes it isn't right to have trans women compete in female categories and instead should be in an open division. I think a lot of women worldwide feel that's blatantly unfair because if a person has gone through puberty with the full sort of testosterone levels that make them taller and their lungs bigger and their muscles bigger and their, their frame size larger, um, they have just incredible advantage. It doesn't matter that you take down their testosterone for one year. She says competitive sports already separate people based on their body type. For instance, she says flyweight boxers don't compete against heavyweights. In the U.S., trans athletes have sparked a lot of debate. In Connecticut, some parents started a petition demanding a rule change after two trans athletes started winning girls' high school sprint races. Online, the conversation has turned particularly toxic. With insults thrown from all sides, Blade says many are afraid to speak up and share their opinions. Everybody's made to feel like a bigot if they say something wrong and then the mob comes after you, the social media mob. I feel like we need to really have this conversation in a, in a safe way where we're all able to say what we want to say without just assuming that we all hate the other side. 
Lift, lift. She lift. questions why there's such a rush to introduce a transgender policy, saying the ramifications haven't been properly studied. But there is scientific research underway. Everything you got near to where it counts. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Inside this sports lab, Jillian Bearden is being tested. Awesome part of the test. Her oxygen intake is measured and her blood is taken. Just hang with it. Stay focused. She's part of a research study and is an ideal candidate because she was tested before she transitioned, so there's baseline data. Overall, her power is down by more than 11%. You're doing all of this testing and you're making the, the data available for research. Like, why is that important for you to have that information out there? It gives me a safe place and the women I compete with knowing that um, I'm legit, let's say. You know, there's no questions that when I'm on that podium that I'm on there because of any other reason than I'm an athlete and I train my ass off every single day. Bearden is a road racer and recently won a women's state championship. She believes trans athletes should be required to take hormone therapy and get their testosterone levels tested because her performance data shows just what kind of difference it can make. I do feel that if you want to compete in the women's field that you have to comply with the rules that are, are out currently right now. Most women's testosterone levels are below three nanomoles a liter. The rules require that trans women keep their levels below 10 nanomoles, but that's expected to change before the next Olympics and be cut to five. That's it, Julie, come on, this is it. Bearden is part of a small study, but very little research has been done in this area. Canadian Joanna Harper is hoping to change that. As a trans athlete and a scientist, Harper has unique insight. She started her transition in 2004. Within nine months of hormone therapy, I was running 12% slower. And that's the difference between serious male distance runners and serious female distance runners. As a long distance runner, the gap was shocking, but as a medical physicist, intriguing. So she set out to track trans athletes, including Bearden. Harper became an advisor to the IOC, and this fall will help lead a much larger study at a university in the UK. She says there are still gaps around understanding how athletes are affected by gender transition. Once someone goes through puberty, how do their muscles and cardiovascular systems respond to the drugs? Why do you think this is something that the sports community needs to deal with right now? So it would be very, very easy for uh, a few individuals with full male athletic capability to completely swamp the women, and we saw that in the Rio Olympics. Semenya now taking the lead, looking fresh and powerful. By that she means the 800 meter final. It'll be Semenya all by herself. South African runner Castor Semenya took gold. She along with the silver and bronze medalists all have unusually high levels of testosterone. Well, the context around trans and intersex athletes is very different. It's all become part of this larger often contentious discussion around what is a simple advantage and what is unfair. And Harper has often found herself right in the middle of it. All I can do is, is continue to push on and, and, and try to be rational and reasonable and, and hopefully get more science and more data. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it, it, it's hard when things are so divided and so heated. <laughs> And often public and very personal. Rachel McKinnon said she had to ask four people to flag the hateful content that was coming in on her Twitter feed. These fears that trans women are a threat to women's sport are irrational fears of trans women, which is the dictionary definition of transphobia. And we need to call it what it is. McKinnon may be one of the most vocal activists in this entire debate, but tonight at this race, she was quieter, even appearing apprehensive. She chose to race alongside the men in one event because they would push her. Blazing away from the field. She ended up finishing well back. Afterwards, though, it was the women 
who yeah, wanted yeah, to meet her. I hope that by the time an athlete who's trans gets in the Olympics that we celebrate that and not revisit this debate over again, whether it's fair or not. But that might be wishful thinking. Right now, this issue remains very divisive. And as the next Olympics get closer, it's possible the debate could get even louder. Good work, Rachel. Way to ride tonight. Briar Stewart, CBC News, near Atlanta, Georgia.